Welcome back everybody. In this video, I am going to talk about ad hoc polymorphism and touch on the adapter pattern. Now, the first thing you are probably asking yourself is, what the heck is ad hoc polymorphism? Well, as we can see from this uh, lackluster definition, it is when we provide a different implementation for a function based on the data type that we pass in. So in the case of what we are working with here, we have some string and some array. Uh, as you might assume, some string is of type string and some array is of type array. But we have this standardized pipeline that we are going to be building upon. At the moment, it is just using map, passing in the input, and trying to apply the increment function, which just takes in either a, a number or a character in this case, converts it into a number, and uh, adds one. So down here, we are starting with some array. We want to increment every value in that array, assign it to result 1, and then we are console logging that out. The obvious problem here is we have not implemented map, and so if we tried to run this, we would get map is not defined. So let us freaking define it. Now your first gut reaction might be, okay, if we want to provide different types of, or different implementation based on the data type, maybe we will pass in a collection and the transformation function. And then inside the body of our implementation, we could do a type check on the collection. And if it is equal to a certain type, so in this case string, we would provide some sort of implementation. So, you know, that. And then if we had some other custom data type with type custom, maybe it has a different implementation. So it's, it, it's that, you know. <laughs> the, there's a benefit here. Of course, and the benefit is that the implementation details for map all live in one spot. So anytime you want to see how map imp is implemented for a particular data type, you can look at the definition of map. The downside here is that you have to modify map every time you want to update the implementation for a particular data type or if you want to support another data type. So maybe we have string and we have custom, we want to add a map for streams or linked lists, something like that. We would have to come into map and modify the, co the source code every single time, which means that map is not open to extent extension and closed to modification. So we want to write something that will be a bit more flexible. And the benefit of JavaScript having the, this keyword is that it gives us access to the context in which that function is being run. So we can say that we'll get a context and instead of trying to implement something ourselves, we can just defer to the implementation of map provided by the object that was passed in. And the object that is passed in has this aware methods on it. One of those this aware methods is map. Oh, excuse me. And so we don't have to write an implementation here because the data type will come to the function with its own implementation provided, which works really well. So now if we run this, we will see that our output is exactly what we expect. It is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is one higher at each element than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Excellent. It's working exactly how we want. But now we want to do the same thing for some string. Well, String doesn't implement map, so if we go here and update this from some array to some string, and then we try to console log that output, we're going to have a bad time because context.map is not a function. There is no dot map method on string. And so what we'll do is hop over to our uh, already prepared implementation of map, and we're going to modify string directly because we're reckless cowboy coders. So don't do this in the real world. This is for illustration purposes only. We'll be doing the better, method, or the better approach to this later in the video. But we're hopping onto the prototype chain, modifying string directly and saying, string, you now have a map implementation. And that map implementation will be a this aware function. We can see we use this here. And it has, it's going to accept a transformation function. All it's going to do is say, all right, Given the context I'm in, I want you to take the value and split it. That will produce an array. We're going to cheat, and because arrays already have a map method, we don't have to write our own. Pass in the transformation function, and then join that array back together with dot join, and the same 
um, dividing character, which is in this case an empty string, that we used for split. And as long as you do that, it's isomorphic, so we essentially get the exact input that we passed in, except it's been modified at each character by our map function. So if we save this, oops, and run it, we get what we would hope for, which instead of 444 is now 555. We are using the same map call passed in with the same modification function, but we're giving it a different data type. Instead of being an array, it is now a string. And the result is that we use the implementation of map that is provided on the string object instead of the map that is provided on the, an array object. And so we've created, we have made, sorry, map be ad hoc polymorphic. Great. But let's take it one step further. Map already exists. So we, had, we just simply leverage the existing map on some array and then leverage the existing map on some array, or sorry, on the array prototype in order to map over a string by converting it to an array. So let's make something totally new. We'll call it duplicate. So first of all, we will add it to our pipeline. And we have to decide what duplicate is going to look like. So we're already incrementing each value, but now we want to duplicate it. So we'll hop over to uh, my already prepared code. And we'll steal, actually, let's just steal both of them at once. So here, we've implemented on string, we've added a duplicate method, and we've added a duplicate method onto array as well. Array is very straightforward. It's just taking the current context, spreading it twice, which gives, and wrapping it in uh, liter, uh, array literal syntax, which means that we have now joined two arrays. Very simple. The result is that the array will be repeated twice. We've done a very similar thing for duplicate on the string prototype. We've split the values by an empty character again, which gives us an array of every character. And then we've done the same implementation that we had for array and then joined it back up. And so now if we run this, uh, duplicate is not defined because we have to define our function that will defer to the context, save that. And now if we run it, we get two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, and six fives as a string. So this is working as expected, but we can get even a little nicer here because we convert array or the string into an array. We can simply hop on here and say that all we actually want is to call duplicate. So we don't need this intermediary array. We can call duplicate because it is already an array. Now if we run it, we get the exact same output. We're leveraging a custom definition of a method that doesn't already exist. And then using that custom definition on another custom definition on a different data type, so much polymorphism, very ad hoc, much wow. And it's all being passed through the same pipeline. So this is this is great. This is if you've watched the transducers video or the Monad mini series, you've seen a lot of stuff like this already. But let's take it one step further and create our own custom data type. These already exist. We already know about strings and arrays. But maybe in the real world, you would want to use something like linked lists or uh, streams, something like that. So we'll create our custom data type, and it has some quirks to it. I'll put it down here, it'll be a bit easier to follow. So this is our custom data type. It's simply an object that has a value to point a value property which points at whatever value we want. I'm initializing this one with hello world. Because it is already an instance of the data type, I've provided a of method onto this instance, which allows us to create new instances of it. And all that does is just pass in the current context into object.create, which creates a new instance. On that new instance, we need to assign, uh, 
we want new instance dot value equals value and then return that new instance. So this allows us to modify a, or create a new instance of my data type without modifying the original my data type. Now we can see here that we have an implementation of map provided, but for whatever reason, it was decided at some point in the previous history of my data types lifecycle in this code base, this is all hypothetical stuff, that map should exist, but it shouldn't do anything. So it's just using an identity function, which is defined up here. And all that means is no matter what you pass in, no matter what you try to do, map has no effect. It just acts as though it was never called and just passes along the original context exactly as it was. It doesn't change it. And we have this other method called double. Now double does what we want duplicate to do, but it's called double. That's a bummer. So we, we need some way of leveraging the existing implementation of double but instead of it being called double, we need to call it duplicate. And we don't want to modify this definition up here for duplicate. And that's where the adapter comes in. So this is not the most efficient way to write an adapter, but I think it's the most expressive for the purpose of this example. We can come back over here and create a little function called my data adapter. It's going to create or take an instance of my data type and it's going to add to that instance a method called duplicate, which simply defers to the implementation called double. So in other words, what's going to happen is every time that the adapted my data type is called with dot duplicate, it'll just say, all right, I have an implementation of duplicate. It's the implementation of double, which means that we can come down here to our pipeline and create a result three, pass in my data type. Now this one won't work. Also, I have a custom implementation of log uh, up here, which just spits out the value directly. It just makes it easier to look at in the console so we don't have to look at all the methods. But uh, if we tried to do this, so like if we look at this now, this is not going to work. We have an issue, which is that context.duplicate does not exist. And that's because we need to pass it into or through our adapter. Uh, so my data adapter. And now my data adapter has provided it with a pointer from duplicate to the implementation, which is actually called double. And oh, it still doesn't work because I need to define my ad hoc polymorphism up here for log, log. Save that. And what have I done now? Console.log is not a function. Uh, what? And I'm sorry, what? Was that exact error? Const.log, context.log, context.log is not a function. My, oh, I'm passing in result two. That is the problem. We want to pass in the correct instance or the correct data type. And there we go. Now we get what we expect. We get hello world twice, which means that we passed it into our pipeline. Nothing happened when we tried to map over it. We just got the exact same value back, which was hello world, but the duplicate did exactly what it was supposed to do. It duplicated hello world. So now instead of hello world once, we have hello world twice, and we didn't write an implementation of duplicate. We simply renamed, or not really renamed, we took duplicate and said, you give me a duplicate, I'll give you back an implementation of double. It does what you already want. And that's the purpose of our little adapter. So that's the basics of ad hoc polymorphism and adapters or the adapter pattern. Again, depending on the language and depending on the code base, depending on a bunch of things, there are different ways of implementing adapters. But this is a very straightforward way of doing it. I'm simply creating a new object and adding a new method to that object without modifying the base object. So if I were to try to call duplicate on the original my data type, it doesn't exist because we did not modify my data type, we adapted it. So that is the difference between what we did up here where we modified the base instance directly and at the bottom here where we, instead of modifying it directly, wrapped it in a adapter.
I hope that uh, helps you. Hope you enjoyed something about this video. And if you were particularly upset by this, my e lack of an ES link configuration, hope you get over it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you when I see you. Bye.